Church, let's stand to our feet tonight. Hallelujah. Do you believe that something has shifted over these past few days? Come on, do you believe it? Come on, turn to somebody and say, God has answered me. Come on, I don't believe that you believe what you say. Come on, do you believe that God has answered me? Hallelujah. Come and rejoice this evening. Hey. Come and put those hands together. Are you ready to dance before the Lord? See ya.
Let's see your hands in the air. Here we go. How many trusting God for a miracle this week? Come on. How many seen the hand of God move over this week? With testimonies, hallelujah. We trusting Him for breakthrough. Whoa. Come sing with us tonight. Here we go. You are
spirit break through in my soul break through in my weakness break through in my struggle you are the god you are the god of the breakthrough in my worship break through in my praise break through when i live and glorify your name break through when i dance break through when i shout you are
Oh, be safe tonight, Lord, because you love us. We safe tonight, Lord, because we're in your arms. We'll be kept by you, Lord. And 
so good tonight to be here with us. Uh, we have Durban Christian Center Phoenix with Pastor Mervyn all the way there in Phoenix. Family, let's put our hands together for the Phoenix congregation. And then all the way up in Hillcrest, we have Pastor Mark and Megan that are joining us tonight. Can we put our hands together for all of them? Wonderful that our campuses can cross over. And then don't forget, this is being live streamed all over the world with our Christian Center Church. Let's give all our online viewers a big round of applause tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a week it, it has been. My, oh my, an incredible week it has been. And I know that the Phoenix people, they're going all night. They're, going, they, they're praying right through the night till tomorrow morning. And uh, we've taken the word Jubilee, and every night we've taken, we started last Sunday with the J, and then the U, B, I, L, E, and so on and so forth. And we've had an incredible night. And together as a church, we're one church in many locations. We're one house that has many rooms. And I wonder if we can just together, we're only going to be for a while together right now. So if we can get to point number one, and we are talking, praying, the E, which stands for eternal value. 
How many of you understand that the kingdom is, revolves around the concept of eternity? It revolves around the concept of human beings that carry eternal value. It revolves around the concept that your flesh might be dying and perishing. And some of you woke up and you saw a few more wrinkles. And what's supposed to be up is down. I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, gravity, that's the, that, we'll blame it on gravity. But you will live forever and ever and ever. The eternal part of you, which is your spirit. So we're, this is what we're praying for tonight. And of course, that involves souls. This house is a, a soul winning house. If that's what we learned last night with the legacy of Dr. Fred and Sister Now. We, we're out for souls, man. We want to win souls. Amen. We want to win souls. And the first point that we're going to pray is we ask that every member of the Durban Christian Center, whether it be Phoenix, whether it be Hillcrest here in Jesus' Dome, whether it be the international online church that we have, Christian Center Church, that we would gather fruit for eternal life that we would gather fruit for eternal life. Let's look at some scriptures here, and then we're going to declare all this together. The first scripture that we have is Jesus speaking in John 4, 36. Even now, even when? In, in 2030? In 2024? Even now, the harvest workers, that's you and I, are receiving their reward by gathering a harvest that brings eternal life. I think this is one of the most exciting times for the church, you and I, to be alive and well. We are in a moment, in a period, in the history of mankind, in the calendar of God that I believe is the most exciting. You say, Pastor John, how can you say that when everywhere around about us, the whole wide world is collapsing, there's chaos, Murders, rapes, crime, corruption, unemployment, poverty, sickness, pandemics, COVID-19, whatever else is looming on the horizon. How can you say that? Because where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. Hallelujah. Didn't get a lot of hand claps there. Didn't get a lot of hand claps there. In the midst of darkness, come on, we are the people of Goshen. That's the day and age that we're living in. Everything else is might be collapsing around about us, but not in my house, not in my family, not in my business, not in my household, not in our church. Hallelujah. And we are in the throngs of reaping the greatest harvest, the greatest ingathering that we have ever witnessed that will eclipse what happened in the early 1500s with Martin Luther and as truth was added down on through the dispensation, the early 1900s with the Pentecostal charismatic movement, let me tell you what we're about to ha happen, what we're about to witness with our very eyes is going to eclipse all those other great moves. And Jesus is going to come back and He's going to come back for a triumphant church. Not a church that is hanging on, ready to quit any minute. And if you don't hurry up, Jesus, I may just backslide. No, sir, that's not the church of Jesus Christ. We're living in some of the most exciting times. All right. What's the other scripture? Give me the other scripture that we can back that up as well. That was the first scripture. It says, a winner of souls is wise. Do we have any wise people here this evening? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you, winning people to the Lord, you don't have to have a million scriptures and know the Greek and the Hebrew and be born again for, you know, 45 and a half years. It's just, did you, did you, did you, did you encounter that love? Yes, I did, Pastor. Then go ahead and share that love encounter with somebody else. Period. That's it. That's how simple it is. That's how simple it is. The gospel is good news. And if it's good news to you, it'll be good news to others. Let's get that declaration right there in Phoenix, right there in Hillcrest. We are one with you, trusting God for a mighty ingathering of souls, a mighty harvest 
I want you to take a deep breath, stir up all the faith that you have, because every one of us is a soul winner. Every one of us is a discipler for Jesus Christ. Every one of us is a mentor. Whether you like it or not, people are watching you. The moment you say, I'm a believer, there were eyes that were watching you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here we go. One, two, three. God has given me wisdom and I am able to win souls for Jesus. I follow after Jesus and I am a fisher of people. I become all things to all people, but I may by all means lead people to Jesus. Hallelujah. I turn those who have wandered from the truth back to Jesus. My passion is to see the city of Durban saved. I lift up my eyes and I see the fields. Let's stop there. I see Durban. I see Phoenix. I see Hillcrest. I see the whole of KZN. Let's say that one more time. I lift up my eyes and I see the fields that are white unto harvest. I advance the obedience of my faith among everyone who is in my world in Jesus' name. You have people in your world. I have people in my world. And we are going to win those people that are in our world. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want us to, I don't know how we're going to do this, but let's pray for Phoenix right now because they're, they're doing a marathon tonight. They're, they're going right through the night. I know they have a bibliothon going on as well, reading the Bible. And they have people that are taking the 1 a.m. shift and the 2 a.m. shift and the 3 a.m. shift. And uh, I hope that they're praying for us. We're not as godly and holy. I'm just kidding. But thank you so much. So let's pray for Phoenix and the families there with Pastor Mervyn. All right, Father, we bring Phoenix and all those folks tonight that are going to go right through the night, that you would sustain them, that you would protect them, that you would preserve them, that you would watch over them. My God, that whatever breakthrough they're believing for, you would grant it to them, that you would replenish. I speak right now the a replenishing spirit. I declare, my God, that there shall be an overflow. Even with regards to Hillcrest and Pastor Mark and Megan, we declare the overflow of God. The oversupply. I declare the oversupply. Families that are in that church, families that are in those campuses, elders and leaders, the oversupply, the oversupply, the oversupply, that out of these days of praying and fasting, God, that there would be the demonstration of the signs and wonders and miracles, what they've been trusting for and believing for already. There have been the testimonies and already there have been the stories and already there has been the witness already. There has been the demonstration of the awesome God that we serve and we give you all of the praise and all of the glory in Jesus mighty name amen let's go while we've got you online don't forget that we do have a leaders meeting this coming Tuesday night Phoenix and uh, Hillcrest we're going to be here uh, at the Jesus Dome, 7 p.m. All right, we're going to have a great time, all the leaders. But let's go to point number two while we've still got some time and we've got you together. We ask that we would live differently. We ask that we would live differently. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. You don't have to try and fit in. Hello? Yes, of course, we are relevant. We have to be relevant. The message never changes. Maybe the methodology might change, but we have to live. There has to be a difference between a born again believer and somebody that's not born again. I think it's a sad state of affairs when you look at the church and you look at the world. I can't see any difference. I can't see any difference. There's adultery, there's adultery, there's crime, there's crime, there's thievery, there's. Mm, no, we ought to live differently. 
There ought to be something different about you. Hallelujah. When they looked upon Daniel and the three other brothers, there was something different about these guys, man. And the Bible says they were 10 times, 10 times more than what the astrologers and the wizards and the sorcerers of that time could bring to the table. They brought 10 times more wisdom, 10 times more ethics, 10 times a greater standard. Hallelujah. There's something different. Put that point up again. Leave it up on the screen. We ask that we would live differently, reflecting our heavenly eternal citizenship. First scripture. The first scripture is, and set your minds and keep them set. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on the things that are on the earth. There's a lot of stuff happening on the earth. Don't, don't worry about that. That has to happen. That has to happen so the plans of God can be fulfilled. Next scripture. But we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. And from there, we eagerly await the coming of the Savior. He's coming. Hallelujah. I told you, if your bags are packed, you better unpack them because He's not coming anytime soon. Is that, we, we got a whole lot of work to still do. I said, there's a lot of work still to be done. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. The church is not glorious. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm all for the church. I love the church. I'm a local church man. The church is by far glorious. Hallelujah. Here's our declaration. All right, everybody lift your voice. Here we go. My affection is set on things above. I am habitually focused on heavenly things. My thoughts are fixed on eternal matters. I give my heart over to things that are greater than on the earth. Heaven fills my thoughts. Say that again. Heaven fills my thoughts. One more time. Heaven fills my thoughts. I stay focused on what is above. I am a citizen of heaven. One more time. I am a citizen of heaven knowing that there is far more to life than what is around me. Hallelujah. You're a citizen of heaven. I'm a citizen of heaven. Durban Christian Center Phoenix and Hillcrest, Pastor Mervyn, Pastor Mark and Megan, thank you so much. We love having connected with you, joined with you. All right, enjoy the rest of your evening. Let's put our hands together and give them a big God bless you. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Now, this is what I thought we could do in just a couple of minutes now. Those of you that want to sit in your seats, you can, or you want to stay there, you can. But I want us just to move up and down this building. Because, let me just say something. My heart is not to have church for the sake of having church. Come on, yes. On a Sunday, when, we, when people come in here, my goodness, if we're just going through the same old, same old, and we're just gathering people, and it's great. We sing a couple of songs, and there's a bit of a word, and then we all go home. When we come back, I think we would have missed the plot. But we are trusting and believing that from the moment people drive into the car park, they might be arguing, like some of you tonight when you came in the car. I'm just kidding. But you know what it's like? Life is real. And, and so people come to church on a Sunday, they've had a bad week. They're in the car arguing. I don't know. I don't know what. But the moment they drive into that car park, that they would encounter the presence of Jesus. When they walk through these doors, that's the thing that really struck me when I first came to the Durban Christian Center in 1982, many moons ago, was that God was in this place and He was here for me. Nobody told me that. I was a, I was a bad Roman Catholic. Didn't, I, I, I wasn't schooled in the Bible. But the first thing when I came into the church, what hit me right in between the eyes, being uneducated in the Bible, uneducated in the Scriptures, was that God was here in this building and He was available for me. And I pray, that that's our prayer, is that people would encounter Jesus in this place. 
If they go home and they encountered you and encountered the worship and encountered the beauty of this building, let's close the doors and, and go and join a rotary club or something because we would have missed the boat. We would have missed the point. So I want you for the next five or so minutes, I want you to walk up and down these chairs and touch those chairs because every chair, every seat represents a soul and every soul has eternal value. Every soul has eternal value. And we don't know what's happened to that soul. We don't know the fight they've had to fight. We don't know the struggles they've had to endure. We don't know the abuse and the hardship they've had to endure. But God knows. And all that soul needs that carries eternal value is an encounter with Jesus. And this is what this is all about. This. The reality of a living, loving Savior. So as we walk up and down these aisles, you're praying for people. You're not praying for chairs. Lay your hands on those chairs. Pray for that husband. Pray for that mother. Pray for that wife. Pray for that child that's wayward. Pray for marriages that are, have become discorded and distant and there's disunity. Pray for those who would be sitting there on a Sunday, one Sunday, I don't know which Sunday, but that who would be under a spirit of depression. Pray that those suicidal demons would be broken, that they would find deliverance. Let's begin to walk up and down these aisles, right in the back, wherever the Spirit of the Lord leads you. Just touch those chairs, and when you touch those chairs, there's somebody that you're praying for. Can we do that? Come on, let's do that. While they're ministering and worshiping, let's just go down. Find a chair, walk up and down. Put your hands on that chair. Pray, 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 pray right now that the spirit of rejection would be broken. Pray, pray, whatever it is, the resentment, the hatred. Pray right now the violence that they have endured. Pray that there would be a healing emotionally. Pray that their minds would be renewed. Pray that for the very first time they would begin to see that there is a hope, that my life has a hope, my life has a meaning, my life has a purpose. There's a reason why I was born. I wasn't born to be abused. I wasn't born to be rejected. I wasn't born to be despised. Come on, come on, you can do it, I know. You're praying for souls that carry eternal value. Oh God, in this place, in this place, in this place, every Sunday, every moment that we would gather in this place, from the car park to the entrance, to the foyer, to where they come into the sanctuary, my God, that they would find the presence of the Lord, that they would seek that comfort, that there would be the compassion, the compassion of Jesus that nobody would be turned back, that nobody would be rejected, that nobody would be despised. Oh God, I pray that every soul, that you have placed eternal value on every soul, that they would run into the open arms of Jesus. And we pray that those who have fallen by the wayside, those who are backslidden, that they would not come under a judgment or a condemnation, but they would feel the tug of the love of God that would be greater. That love, that love, that overwhelming love that would be greater, greater than the condemnation, greater than the guilt of that sin, greater than the guilt of that shame, greater than the embarrassment of how they've let you down. Oh, we pray blood this very place with your presence. Flood this place with your presence. Flood this place with your presence, my God. It is for these people that you died and hung on a cross. For God so loved the world. For God so loved people that he placed eternal value on every soul, no matter their background, no matter their culture. 
no matter their diversity, no matter their language, my God, my God, my God, my God, let there be an overwhelming love as we touch every chair, every seat that is represented by our person. We might not know them, my God, but they are known by heaven. They are known by you. And today we bring them to you, my God. Let every person, I pray, have that touch of God on their life. Let them encounter heaven. Let there be a heaven on earth, my God. Let there be a heaven on earth in this place. Let there be a heaven on earth in this place. It don't matter that we sing songs and we play on our instruments and there's lights and we have a beautiful building. If there be not your presence, if there be not people that encounter a living, loving Savior. Ah, yes, Lord. Yeah. That children, there would be a mighty move among our children. Every child that comes into this place, every teenager that comes into this place, every young adult that comes into this place, my God, my God, as we lay hands, as every one of us lays hands, and we're all praying tonight, my God. You said one can chase a bat and two can chase 10,000. You said if any two of us agree on earth concerning anything that we ask, that it shall be done for us by our Father, which is in heaven. And tonight we thank you for the imprint of heaven upon this ministry, upon this campus, down in Phoenix, in Hillcrest, my God. We thank you for the imprint of heaven upon everyone that's watching us online in their very homes in their very locations, in that town, in that village, in that city, the imprint of heaven, my God, the reality of your love, the reality of your compassion, the reality of your compassion, the reality of your compassion, and oh, the
fights to line found leaves and I deny oh when I, I couldn't earn it and I don't I don't deserve it, it. still you give yourself away and no. do something tonight that I should have done last night I, I, I wanted to do it last night and I felt the Holy Spirit wanted me to do it tonight and I know Pastor Ron it was your birthday yesterday and I want us to receive a love offering that's going to go to Ron and Judy we want to just bless you this is not for your ministry. This is for you to do whatever you want to do. Right? If you want to go on holiday, go on holiday. If you want to bake a cake, bake a cake. Do whatever. And I want all of us tonight, do we have the bags ready? I'd like for all of us to sow into this ministry. When I think about Pastor Ron and Judy, they've been with us for so long in the days of Pastor Fred and Sister Nell so faithful so so when you when you look up faithful in the dictionary you will see ron and judy foster you will see their name there. when you think about consistency and uh, that there is a steadfastness in somebody's life you can look at pastor ron and judy there's been a steadfastness a consist and it's not to say that they haven't come through difficult trying hard moments they have but they're still standing still standing and uh, and so tonight I want us to do our very best is that okay every cent that you give on the if it goes onto the machine or whatever 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 is gonna go straight to them it's gonna go to them I felt we needed to just bless them they're doing a great job in Mozambique there's a ministry that we have there in Mozambique. We've been there multiple times, taken the Bible college students. We've gone there and painted. Just hold on a bit before you send the bags because some people need to think about it, looks like. You don't need to think about it. Just do it. Hallelujah. You say, well, what amount? The first amount that comes into your brain, that's too big. We'll double it then. But I, I want us to really bless them, all right? Because you, you do whatever you got to do. You do whatever you got to do. Because I felt tonight that we need to just bless you and Judy and all that we get tonight, however much it is, it's just for you. And it's, I, I want to emphasize this. If you want to use it for the ministry, you can. But you don't have to. You don't have to. We just wanted you to kick back. If, if there's enough to go on holiday, go on holiday. If there's enough to buy a boat, buy a boat. If there's enough to, you know, have a suit made, have, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. This is for you and Judy, whatever you want to do. All right? Can we stretch our hands out towards them tonight? And those of you online, if you want to help, you can. We'll just redirected into his account that's all very simple very simple father tonight as we bring pastor ron and judy to you thank you for their faithfulness and their commitment all these years and lord it's not like they haven't gone through storms they have but i thank you that they're still standing i thank you for their faithfulness i thank you for their steadfastness i thank you for their consistency I thank you for their willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of the ministry. And they've done that many a times, Lord. Lord, you know the sacrifices that they've had to make. You know the sacrifices that they've had to make. And tonight I thank you, my God, that you would replenish. That even as I felt the word of the Lord coming that this year, there would be no lack, no lack that every need would be met in the name of Jesus. Supernaturally, my God, supernaturally. And we bless them in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen and amen. All right, now go ahead, pass those bags around and do your very best, all right? Do your very best. If you need to borrow the person's wallet on the inside, on the side of you, I give you permission to do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Can we sing a song? You got a song for us to sing? What does it mean to be saved? Is it more than just a prayer when we pray? More than just a way to heaven. What does it mean to be his? To be formed in his likeness. To know that we have purpose. Yes, I pray to To be song and light in the world. In the world. To be song and light. Let the redeem. Can you check? Where's John? Guys, we done? We good? We good? We good? We good, John? All right. No? Yes? Yeah? I can't see. But anyways, looks like it's good. Okay. <laughs> I need binoculars. Lord Jesus, help my eyes. All right. Lift your hands tonight. Hasn't it been a great week just coming together? Wow, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed being here with you guys. So, Father, as we go our various ways, we want to thank you for what you are doing in the lives of men and women. Lord, during this week, we want to thank you for that which has been harvested, that which has been invested, and that which is about to be harvested. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the ability to demonstrate the greatness of our God, Lord. And we vow, as always, to give you all of the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, Tuesday night, leaders meeting, Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, see you, Pambili. And it's going to be a phenomenal, don't miss it. You, you don't want to miss it. All right. <laughs>